All right, guys, we're back on the TRX-90, and today we're gonna to be installing a rear chain guard. I pulled this one out of my parts bin. Um, has this weird extra little bracket right here. I might cut that off and <clears throat> see if we can figure out a way to weld a bracket onto the swing arm. I'm gonna take you over to my little TRX-50 and show you what I did um, for that chain guide. It's it's worked out really well. All right, here's the chain guide on the TRX-50. Really like the way this one came out. It's basically just a piece of angle, angle iron with a little bent piece of tubing that I weld together. Two, two main bolts, and then this third one over here. This one, you know, just seems to be hanging in the breeze. I guess I could have made it to have a third bolt, but I don't really see the need for it. All right, so this is going to be mounted just like that. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. Pull this bolt out. Uh, probably just leave that there and just notch the angle iron a little bit. And weld it right around it. I'm trying to get this set down to the exact spot it's going to be in. And then I'll take the tape measure. I'll measure from just below those two bolt holes on the chain guide to the center line of the swing arm. All right, so I'm gonna line this up roughly right there. I might weld up these holes or maybe drill one hole right there to kind of make it look a little even. I don't know. All right, my number is two and a quarter inches. So I'm just gonna measure down from there, two and a quarter and draw some lines and just cut out the angle iron. All right, so I cut off this little piece here and I welded up some of this hole. I just started grinding it down. The hole was elongated, as you could see. I just shortened it down so that I could fit my two holes. I'm going to end up putting one there and one there, and I'll probably just leave these holes to make it easier. All right, I got the holes marked out. Ironically and completely by accident, I was able to space this elongated hole so it would line up with the recess in the bracket. And what I like to do here, guys, is leave this angle iron intact, uh, mark these two, drill them with the pilot hole, and then probably flip it over so I could get it nice and flat. But if you leave it all one bracket, when you mount it in the drill press, you could basically just hold it with your hand. If I cut this down much smaller, then it gets tricky trying to hold it. I got to try to clamp it. So remember, drill your holes and do anything, cutting or anything that needs to be done while the piece is whole, and then make your final cuts at the end. All right, this is what I have so far. The screw's in. I could slide this back and forth as needed. I'm going to pull the chain off, figure out where. It'll go something like that figure out where I'm going to notch it for that little threaded bung and then weld it on.
got the top welded in. I made up a little triangular gusset, so to speak, in the front. And then I'll make up some aluminum spacers and we should be good to go. All right, I got this piece of scrap stock here. Um, I actually think it's magnesium, but I'm not positive, but it'll be good for these bushings. I have this stack that it came with. Um, there's three here. And I just need it to be about a 16th of an inch thicker than these three put together. So I'm gonna make two of them that thickness. And then I'm gonna mess around with these three and see if I could use them to fill in the backside.